Hi guys, how are you? I've tried recording this video three times already, and the first two times I was hopped up. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> you could literally watch Kristen chain smoke cigarettes for freaking hours. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Sam, if you're new here, and uh, I'm a pop culture commentary channel, and I talk about whatever I want. And today, whatever I want to talk about is Vanderpump Rules. So if you don't know, uh, I already have a playlist of me recapping uh, season two, three, and currently I'm recapping season four of Vanderpump Rules. But I've also been like kind of sprinkling in my thoughts and feelings about like the finale of Vanderpump Rules uh, this season. And I'm going to be doing obviously my thoughts and opinions on the reunion that just happened for the first part. Uh, I'm going to be doing my makeup while I do this because I need to look somewhat more decent than I look right now. And the other two times I tried to record this, I did my makeup too, and it actually turned out really good. Watch it turn out like garbage because I'm actually putting in effort this time and I'm not on painkillers for my horrible, excruciating back pain. If you hear things in the background, um, it's because my son is doing his thing. I got cookies in the oven. I got things going on. Okay, I'm a mess. We already know this. The background, if you're new here, the background's the background, okay? I'm a normal person living a normal life. I'm not a YouTuber with a fancy background. That's not gonna happen, okay? I'm lucky if I get an hour to myself. So this is what you're gonna get. So I just wanted to kind of recap and go over the reunion and how I felt about it. Um, I won't talk about everything that happened in the first part. I will say that the first part of the reunion is usually the most like lackadaisical, I guess you could say. Like it's usually the most chill when we get to parts like three and two and three is when we start like ramping up. So people are like, the first episode of the reunion was so boring. I'm like, it's always boring. Like, what are you talking about? The first one is when we go over like all the dumb stuff. Like, how are you doing? What's new? What's going on lately? Like, where have you been? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, we go over like the, the just like almost like the polite things. We go over the polite things. And I will try to remember to put everything that I'm using down below. I'm going to try. Don't hold me to it, though. That's what the first episode of Reunions usually is, especially for this group, because this group's like pure chaos 24-7. Well, they used to be. Now I'm kind of just like, what are we doing here? So the first episode was the first reunion. Sorry, I keep saying episode. If I say episode, you guys know what I mean, right? The first episode of the reunions uh, was, again, pretty plain Jane. We caught up with how everybody kind of is doing. We talked about Ariana and everything's been going on with her, with the musical and the commercials and all that stuff. We catch up with the girls about the sandwich shop and where that is and how that's going, which uh, as of today, which is I'm recording on May 18th, um, as of today, the sandwich shop, I believe, is going to be open in a couple of days. They did two or one or two soft launches with like a bunch of Bravo celebrities and friends and family. And like Andy Cohen was there and stuff. So they're definitely opening up. That is going to be, that supposedly is happening. So, and I'm pretty sure they open. I thought I saw that they opened on the 22nd. Was that what it was? So they, you know, they said, they're like, oh yeah, you know, <clears throat> when this um, reunion is up, we should be in our place serving sandwiches. So that's, you know, that's cool. They've had a lot of hiccups along the way. Um, a lot of it had to do with the, west hollywood they had to take their awning down that they had like they had a little deck i guess they had to take that down so that was kind of annoying and excuse me of course tom and tom are sitting there like living their literal fantasy they're like oh my god i can't like i'm so happy you can tell they have like cheshire cat grins which is funny like james pointed that out he's like tom look at your face you're smiling so hard for schwartzy he was you could tell they were like yes they finally get it. And then, of course, Ariana's like, I've always gotten it. I was there the whole time that you were trying to to open this restaurant, and I was very supportive of it. So supportive of it that she literally took out a loan with her name on it to help you open that restaurant. But yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just not supportive, and she's lazy, and she's like the worst ever. Sure, 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 sure. Keep going with that narrative that you want to keep spinning. What's crazy is that they, Tom and Tom, and even Lisa... They all act like Ariana and Katie didn't try to get involved with the restaurant and try to help the guys out. That they just like were off in a corner doing their own thing, absolutely hating on the guys. And that just wasn't true. They tried. It was the guys that were like, no, we're not going to do this. And no, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, we've done this before. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, you actually didn't do anything. Uh, Lisa Vanderpump did everything. And Lisa Vanderpump, uh, I'm pretty sure what she kind of sort of admitted to 
was that she was going to literally change Tom Tom behind her behind the boys' backs and turn it into the new pump. So you actually don't know anything to the point that Lisa Vanderpump was going to literally take the restaurant from out from under you guys and completely rename it. So let me you let me know how that worked out. Like these two act like they're restaurateurs. They're not anything. All they are is faces of restaurants. They don't own majority stake in their restaurants. I'm pretty sure you guys can double check with double check me because I'm totally fine if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure they're not even the min minor ma <laughs> majority owners in Schwartz and Sandy's. They're obviously not in Tom Tom. So it's just like okay. Like I have a feeling they're definitely not majority stakeholders. And Schwartz and Sandy is because if they were, they could have told what's his face. Screw you. We want to have the restaurant on the show this season. If you don't like that too bad, but they couldn't do that. You want to know why they couldn't do that? Because I'm pretty sure they're not majority stakeholders and they don't get to do whatever they want with that restaurant. They think they get to, but they don't. That's the funny part. Whereas I'm pretty sure Katie and Ariana, I think are majority owners and I think that might have been one of the reasons why they had a hard time with Penny because I'm going to, my assumption is, is that Penny wanted to take over the restaurant, make her own choices, have everything. And I think the girls, I'm assuming, learned from the situation with the Toms that they didn't want that. They, they wanted to be the majority owners. They wanted to have the full, like, grip of it. And they wanted to make the majority of the decisions and not have to worry about, like, a partner, essentially. So, but again, I don't 1000% know these things, but these are my guesses, my guesses of what that was. Um, they get an update on like how everybody is in regards to like dating and stuff like that. The crazy part to me was that like James, they almost like never talked to James and James and Lala were just basically like sideline, like reporting the whole, <laughs> the whole time making little comments. And it was so refreshing to not see James as like a complete like psychopath. I was like, oh, wow, wow, this is crazy. Even when, even when, um, Brock apologized and he was just like, oh, well, and Andy was like, he's apologizing. He like shut it down really quick, which was really refreshing because in the past we have not seen James act like that. We've seen James act like a freak and a psychopath and screaming and jumping up and calling people worms. So that was refreshing to see. A little bit of a change from him. Obviously, when Allie comes out, I think we'll see something a little bit... Uh, he'll be a little bit more different or maybe a little bit more passionate. Or he'll just be a little bit nicer. Who knows? But I will say, I do... Ugh, I do enjoy him and Lala's little commentary. They should be like ESPN for reality TV. <laughs> I do enjoy it. We talk about some of like, you know, the lies and the dumb things that have come out of Tom Sandoval's mouth. Which is a lot, essentially. And we talk about how he compared the situation of Scandal last year to George Floyd and somebody else. I can't think off the top of my head, but it was just an inappropriate like way of saying it. And the thing that cracks me up is, and I've said this so many times, is that Ariana used to be Tom Sandoval's kind of translator, I guess is the best way to put it. So whenever he was about to say something like stupid or crazy, Ariana would kind of be like, oh, well, he means this. And like Tom Schwartz is kind of that person right now, but he kind of lets Tom fall into sort a little bit more than Ariana used to. So I find that very interesting. I feel like Tom, I don't, like, I don't know. I think Tom Schwartz just likes being in toxic relationships because I don't, I have no clue why he's still friends with this dude. He should just move on with his life. There was one point where they were talking about Tom Schwartz and you know, him like, oh, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to propose to Tom Sandoval about living together because I never thought, you know, I would maybe, I might never get to propose again. And it's like, you could have never proposed again because you could have stayed married. But you didn't stay married because you suck as a husband. Because you're the worst husband literally ever that's ever existed. So I was just like, okay. And then they, they got into, the, you know, the Lawa Katie thing, which we'll talk about in a second. They got into that argument and friggin' La Sheena and Brock are like, you were the worst husband ever. Like, you were horrible. And he's like, no, I wasn't. I was a great husband. It's like, if you're such a great husband, why aren't you guys together anymore? Why are you divorced? Why aren't you together anymore? Because you were a horrible husband. That's why. Can you turn the um, volume off on the monitor? Sorry, I had to go 
get my mail, but look what I got. I got Beyonce's new hairline. I got her deep conditioner and I got her hair oil for my hair. I'm so excited to try it. Anyway, where were we again? What were we talking about? Um, Tom Schwartz is a really shitty husband. Yeah, he's like the worst husband ever. He's absolutely horrible. He's always been horrible. He should have just stayed and been a good boy and stayed with his uh, wife. And he would not never have to propose again because he'd be married like a good boy. <clears throat> But he couldn't do that. So I thought that was really funny that they said that. So I guess I just want to talk, honestly, like, I don't know, the reunion was pretty, the first one was really boring. Like, there wasn't too much going on. There wasn't too many crazy things. There wasn't too many conversations. Oh, we were talking about um, Sandoval being an idiot and saying stupid stuff. Listen, here's the thing is, like, he's not wrong in, like, the overall, yes, 1,000%. The internet, myself included, we all put too much on it to the point that it didn't make it really didn't make sense why that Vanderpump rules would be on CNN like that part I agree with that part I'm here with him it's just like why do you have to say it the way that you said it like why are you comparing it to some very racially motivated situations like I don't know why you have to have a mouthpiece because everything's in your brain is so stupid all he had to say was I just don't understand the hype around what happened. Like, yes, I understand that it was it was sad, it was horrible, and I'm the catalyst for all of that. But to the point where it's now on news stations when we should be focusing on the news on news stations, not reality TV show members cheating. Why couldn't you say that? Why, why couldn't you just say that? But no, no, no. Let's add in two horrible situations that happened it was just kind of it was kind of giving privileged white guy you know what i'm saying like when he said that i'm like you literally have the privilege of saying that because you're a heterosexual white man like it when if he had ariana next to him when he was about to say something stupid like that she would have stopped that conversation in its tracks and not allow him to talk about things like that and Andy Cohen was even like, you need to fire your PR team. They're absolutely horrible. And from what I know, his PR team is like a 20-something year old that just loves Vanderpump Rules. You know what I'm saying? He needs to just stop talking. But he can't help himself because he oh, he doesn't... Tom Sandoval doesn't grasp the fact that there is a world where people don't think he's amazing. Because for the first however many seasons, everybody was up his ass and was like, he's so cool, he's so great, he's so wonderful. Like, he's a, he's a lovable dum-dum. You know what I'm saying? But now people are like, oh no. And you know what the thing is, is that when you have a show, and this is the problem that a lot of these reality TV show people don't um, grasp or understand, is that when you've had a show for so long as theirs, your audience grows up with you and expects better things out of you and expects you to grow as well. So when you have a show that's over a decade old, when it's 11 years old, okay, and you are the same person you were 11 years ago, the audience is not the same person that they were 11 years ago. And when I was 22 years old, 20, yeah, 22, 23 years old, laughing at how dumb these people were, it's because I was dumb. I was 22. I didn't know better. I was an idiot. Okay. And so it's like, I'm not 22 anymore. I've uh, been married twice. I have two children. I have mortgages. I have bills to pay. I have a life. I have a career. So my life has changed. Why hasn't yours? Why are you 40 something years old trying to convince us that it's appropriate for a 40 year old to have roommates and like oh my dad has roommates that that doesn't mean it's okay <laughs> that doesn't mean anything um maybe you should look into that and maybe why your parents aren't married anymore so i want to think about that uh speaking of parents he hasn't paid his mother back and she's like she's a uh, She's finally accepted that that's probably not going to happen. I'm like, I would have literally, I brought you into this earth. I would have taken you out of this earth. That's like the vibe I would have gotten if I was his mom. I'd have been like, you are dead to me. That amount of money. This is why I don't give people money. It's because if I give you money, I just assume I'm never getting it back. Ever. No matter how much it is. If we have not made a contract, a deal, or like set up a way for you to pay me back. I just assume I'm never seeing that money ever again. And that includes like my children. Like when they get older, 
if they ask me for money, I'm just going to assume they're never going to pay me back or I'm going to set something up with them where I can guarantee they're going to pay me back. So for Tom Sandoval, like it, the way that Tom, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the way that he said it, it was almost, he was like, yeah, she, she, she got over it. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's like, you are the, I want to hear from Tom Sandoval's brother. Cause we like never, I don't think we've ever even seen him on the show. And I would love to fit like to see what he thinks. And also because his mom is like a badass, I would love to see what his mom thinks about all this shit. I loved Nick Vile, get her on the podcast, okay? I wanna know what uh Mrs. Sandoval, if that's even her last name, I don't even know if that's her last name. I would love to know what they think. If you've seen past seasons, we've met Tom's dad. We've met Tom's dad and mom, but we've met Tom's dad. And there's a reason why Tom behaves the way he does. He's a lot like his dad. Um, a 40 something year old has been essentially. Okay. So we get into this whole like Lala and Katie situation and oh God, where do I start? Okay. Number one is that I don't like that when people criticize Lala, they want to criticize her as a mother, which I think is so like, so stupid, not needed. You shouldn't be saying that about people. You shouldn't be talking about people like that. Especially when, in my opinion, I actually do think Lala is a great mom. And I think Sheena's a great mom. I think that Stassi and Brittany are great parents. I, and I've always thought that. No matter how I felt about them as, like, personalities on television, I have always thought that they were great mothers. So I don't like it when people go online and they criticize Lala for her behavior or the things that she says and somehow equate that to her being a shitty mom. That's just not... Like you, so you're just not intelligent enough to come up with better conversations. So for me, it's like, stop criticizing these women for being shitty moms, especially when they don't put their lives out there. Like at least, um, Lala doesn't really put a lot out on Vanderpump rules about her daughter because her ex doesn't want the baby to be on the TV, which actually I don't blame. That's the one thing I agree with him on. Get the kids out of the TV, get them off the cameras. Okay. And so we just, we're not going to do that here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to equate that. Now, here's the thing. If they bring up being moms and they bring up things about being a mother, that's a whole other conversation. But if they're not bringing anything up about being a mom and then we're just criticizing their being moms, that doesn't make any sense. So don't do that. I will say the one thing that I, that makes me sad is like, what would these women do if their daughters were behaving this way? They all have daughters. What would they do if they saw their daughters behaving this way. Like, these are the kind of things that I just wonder. And you can't ask that question because you know the automatic answer is going to be, like, I tell them to stand up for themselves and speak the truth and be 100% authentic, blah, 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 like I'm being. And I'm like, okay, what, whatever, whatever. So the thing about Katie and Lala is that I feel like we're miss... <sighs> okay, so the one thing that bothers me about all of this with Lala is that one thing that Sheena's really good at is Sheena is very good at when she has an issue or a concern or a problem, she's the first one to find the receipt and text it to the producer. And the producer will flash it up on the screen. Whereas Lala is like, we had this conversation. We had these text messages. We did this. We did that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, Ariana behaved this way. Ariana acts that way. And it's like, okay, show us. Prove it to me. Where's the proof? Let's show the audience. Where is that? And I don't, I, I'm just waiting for her to prove that to me. Because here's the thing. This is, I don't like it when the group uses past behaviors against someone in order to prove their point. So this happened all the time with Kristen. Because Kristen's a lunatic back in the day, okay, and still is. Um, and you can watch on the Valley right now. They're using Kristen's craziness to their advantage to advance their points of view and to advance how they feel, even though in this specific moment, Kristen's not actually being the crazy one. Somebody else is, and Kristen's just falling on the sword. This is the same thing with Katie. It's like, okay, we're going to use Katie's bad behavior to kill a Katie Katie against her, even though maybe in this moment, she's actually not being to kill a Katie. It's interesting because it's like, okay, you have a friend 
And sometimes friends talk to other friends about other friends and complain and bitch and just, I, I need to vent to somebody who understands where I'm coming from, you know? And this is what I think is what happened. This is what I think happened, okay? I do believe that Lala and Katie did have a conversation about something about her. And I do believe that Katie was pissed the fuck off, wanted to, you know, so, sorry, my son said, don't say the F word, wanted to spew venom and wanted to be mad and angry, but did it in a sense of, I need to vent about this. This is frustrating to me. I'm having a really hard time with this. And Lala thinks everything is for the cameras. Everything. Like everything is for the cameras, except for her. We'll get back to that. Except for her. Everything is for the cameras. Everything is supposed to be out there. Everything is supposed to be seen. Conversations are supposed to be had, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas what Katie was looking for was just a friend to talk to and vent to. Not um, a sit down meeting of how we can talk about future things for the show. And when she said, you know, if you're going to talk about this on camera, I'm going to call you out for your, for your BS. And I'm going to bring your businesses up. I think she said that. And again, I can be wrong and I'm totally fine with that. It felt to me like Lala kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing Katie. And Katie was like, you know what? If you bring this up on camera and you ruin my business, I'm going to ruin your businesses. Cut the crap. Stop talking to me about this. I don't want to talk about it. I'm just venting. I'm just talking to you. I don't want this on the show. I want to have a good space with my business partner. And the difference is, is that people think, I think that Katie and Ariana don't talk about stuff. They do talk about stuff and they have a healthy relationship. And I'm proud of Katie for not wanting to go to Ariana bitching and complaining. I'm proud of her. I'm proud of Katie for being like, let me just complain over here because she doesn't have a husband anymore. Might we add this? Okay. If she had her partner still, she could bitch and play to her partner, but she can't do that because you know, he's over here being a, being a dum dum. So she went to her friend who understands what's going on, who has seen everything that's been going on. And it's like, listen, I just got to vent about this. And then once I vent about it, I'll talk to Ariana in a more appropriate adult business partner way. And then I'll be able to move on. And Lala is just like, no, no, no. You're going to bring everything up that you just said to me on camera. And we're going to talk about it. And that's not what Katie needed, in my opinion, in that, in that moment. She didn't need a producer. She needed a friend. And Lala was not her friend in that moment. And I don't like that Lala and Sheena love to bring private conversations up on camera that have moved on. They've already happened. We've already had conversations. Like even Katie was like, I'm over this. Like, I don't know what else to talk about. Like me and Ariana did have a conversation. We did talk about it. I told her how upset I was. Ariana understood that it made complete sense. And we've moved on. What else do you want to talk about? You want me and Katie to fight on camera? Like you want me and Ariana to fight on camera? That's not going to happen. So find something else. That's, that's the thing is like Lala and Sheena and the other cast members, they want Katie and Ariana to be freaking out and thinking like all these crazy things. And it's like, Katie, Katie's not doing that. Katie's just venting to you, Lala. And then once the venting's over, she's done and over with and she's moved on. There's nothing else to talk about. But Lala's like, no, 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 no. We're going to, we're going to fight about this on, we're going to fight about this on camera. And it's not going to happen. And you can see Sheena over there being like, like loving this. Like when, <laughs> when Ariana said that she didn't watch the show this season, their faces were like, how dare she? It's like, would you want to? I don't understand how in one moment Lala can completely understand Ariana, but then in the next moment she's like, no, 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 I don't understand what you're talking about. You, you suck. You're, you fake. You didn't do anything right. When Ariana said that and explained why she didn't want to watch the show this season because it was traumatizing, Lala was like, I totally get that. I'm like, do you? Do you get that? My thing is that I... Maybe this is because I'm a recovering Lala apologist, but I actually think Lala knows what the audience is thinking and knows how upset we are and knows... But she wanted to produce the show so badly and she wanted to be the one to like push storylines and things like that when 
what she should have done is pushed her own storylines, have her own conversations. Like, why is she, like, there's so many things where I just, I'm like, wow, Lala and Sheena are just not good friends. They're just not good friends. It's funny to me how Katie and Ariana can't keep their business private, can't keep their conversations private, have to have everything on camera. But Lala and Sheena, you're telling me that they haven't had weird conversations, that they haven't had disagreements, that they haven't had hard conversations behind the scenes. I didn't see you guys bring anything up this season. I I don't get it. So how can we have to pinpoint everything onto Ariana and everything onto Katie and everybody else? But when it comes to you two nut jobs, it's got to be something extravagant and it has to be, oh my God, this and oh my God, that. It's like, Sheena, do you really want to be Tom Sandoval's friend? Do you really think he was a good friend? He's not a good friend. It was all performative. He just did it because it made him look good. I've been over this in so many videos. I don't need to like re-explain myself, but he's only good. He's only a good friend because he uses it for gratification for himself. He uses it also against people when he's like, I was such a good friend. I'm doing the recap for season four and in season four, Sheena and him all have an argument and he's like, I've been the best friend in the whole world. I'm such a good friend. Like you cannot get a better friend than me. And it's like, he uses that against you. Whether he was a good friend or not, he's again, he's not doing it out of the goodness of his heart. He's doing it because he's like, oh, I'm going to use this later if I needed to. So that way people can't like, you know, be like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like when Schwartz is sitting there being like, he's such a good friend. He's such a good friend. I'm like, to who? Not to you. He almost tanked your business, bro. Since when is he a good business partner? Since when is he a good friend to you? He ruined your life. Also, can we please talk about, oh my God, tangent. We have to go on this tangent because I cannot stand this. I can't stand it. And I don't know why no one's calling it out. And I mean, literally no one. Not even Andy Cohen, not the fans. Nobody is bringing this up and it's frustrating me. Why are we not talking? Why are we acting like Tom Schwartz just like found out about all this with the cast when he sure as hell did not? He literally gave them his apartment for their little love nest. He was the excuse that Tom used to go see Raquel. He'd be like, oh, I'm going to see Schwartz. I'm hanging out with Schwartz, which Schwartz knew. They went on trips together. They went on that skiing trip all together. Schwartz knew about that. Why are we, when Schwartz is just like, oh my God, like Raquel was so diabolical. And like, you know, she's just as much to blame as, you know, Sandoval is and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, bro, you knew about all this. You were aware of all this was going on. You're not scot-free either. Why no one wants to bring that up. Why no one wants to be like, dude, you knew about all this. Don't sit over there and be all holier than thou. You knew exactly what was going on. You were a part of the scam. The fact that you are so sick and demented to be buddy, buddy with your best friend's mistress. And then somehow in the later on in the season, think a good story that would be you trying to hook up with her. You're all sick. I will not allow Timothy, Timothy, Thomas, Schwartz. <laughs> I will not allow Schwartz to roam this earth acting like he just, oh my God, oh my God, it was so crazy. It was nuts. It was weird. It was nuts. But you knew about it and you helped the nuttery. That's the part that I just, I will, I will never let that go. I never let, I'm never letting it go. And I don't care because I cannot stand him sitting there talking about the situation. Like he just had no clue as well. And trying to defend his friend. Shush. It's like, oh my God, she's like over here always talking about it and like has a whole podcast like dedicated to it. It's like ridiculous. It's like, yeah, it is ridiculous. I understand that. And then when he like calls her like a, a coward, I'm like, bro, just because you showed up to the reunion and defended yourself doesn't make you better than her. I'm sorry. You're not better than her. I guess I'm just kind of, I just don't want to watch a reunion if all we're going to do is try to bait Katie and Ariana and try to get them to see how horrible they are when they were not the horrible people this season. And again, if someone would like to show me proof of where they were horrible, self-centered, had their heads up their butts, I would love to see it. Please tell me that. Ariana literally never brought anything up that she was doing or anything that was happening until somebody else did. Please show me a scene this season where Ariana willingly just opened up about her life from thin air. It was always asked about, talked about, and she mostly responded. I can only think of one time that, that I've seen a clip of. Again, I haven't watched the whole season. So again, I could be completely wrong. 
But I've only seen one clip of where she was talking to Katie. And it was the first episode. Because I think the first and second episodes were the only episodes I watched in full of this season. And she was like, oh, yeah, I guess who's trying to, like, you know, buy me out or whatever. That's the only thing I've ever seen where, like, she brought up the conversation. She was the one that brought this whole thing to the forefront. Everybody else was the one that was putting her in shitty situations. You know, and when Lala, I don't think she talked about it on the reunion. But she's talked about it in other interviews and her podcast or whatever. And she's like, oh, you know, we just really wanted, you know, you're on the show. You guys needed to be together. And we needed to see this and see that. It's like, okay, you did. You, you did. They had a full-on fight at the beach. They had a full-on fight at James's house. How much more do you need? You put her in. And she sat there and she said, I'm tired of you guys pushing me to be around this guy when he doesn't give a rat's butt about me. And I'm sorry, I am so proud of Ariana for calling out the producers and the, you know, like, oh my God, Jeremiah was so mad, blah, 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 blah. And I love that Ariana was like, I don't give a crap if Jeremiah is mad. I don't give a rat's butt. And she said to me after show, she's like, you can look at my contract. It says that if I feel at any point the conversations and the things that we are having are not real and authentic or make me uncomfortable, I can leave. And I did. And I love that for her because more reality stars should use that to their advantage if they do feel like what they're saying is un, is not authentic, not real, and just a play. Because, I'm sorry, the whole Sandoval going up to her at that party in the season finale was BS. It was total BS. I, I've said it, and I'll say it again. I think that Sheena and Sandoval and the producers got together and was like, let's make a scenario up, and they bamboozled her. And she was like, cool, I don't care. You're not going to do that to me. And somehow that makes Ariana the bad guy. No, it's called boundaries, which some of you have tried to do. Some of you have tried to create these boundaries and made everybody else try to follow them. When Ariana sets a boundary, you don't like that. My thing is, is that why is this show completely all of a sudden hinging on Ariana? The whole show apparently is is life or death without Ariana. But then all of a sudden these women, especially Lala, will be like, well, she was a flop. She had no storyline, blah, 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 blah. Okay, if she's such a flop and had no storyline, then show us. Then let her be a flop in the corner. And why don't you give us a show about you? Let's talk about you. But her excuse is going to be, oh, I can only talk about so much because of Randall and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, so you only got Randall going on? There's nothing else going on in your life? There's nothing else going on in the world? Just just Randall. You know what? Something that I think people would love to see, and I guarantee you, is allowed? I would have... You and Amber are such BFF buddy buddies. Get Amber on camera. I'd love to see you talk to Amber. Convince her to do something. Convince her to come on the show and talk to you and be a friend of yours. I would love nothing more than to see Lala and Amber on this show together. And I know for a fact the audience would love it too and would love to hear more about it we would love for you to talk about how randall is a demon person we would love for you to talk about all these crazy things that happened why don't you do that why can't you say these things why can't you do those things make it make sense it's like yes i understand there's legal things so how come when ariana and tom say those that there's legal things you sit there and you're just like uh, uh, uh. I'm so over this, like, why are you living in the house together? Why are you living in the house together? You guys are acting like they interact with each other and party with each other and, like, talk to each other. Half the time, one of them wasn't even there. One or the other. Half the time, Ariana wasn't even there. Everything is always Ariana. It's like, oh, like, Ariana is dirty and keeps the house gross, but, you know, Tom doesn't. It's like, no. And James brought it up great. He's like, no, so you don't clean up and you're not the one that should be, like, rewarded for cleaning. Uh, your maid cleaned. So let's keep it real here. Like, you're not a clean person. You have a maid that does it. That's why you're clean. So stop taking credit for having a clean house when you're not the one cleaning it. He's like, oh, well, you know, I just know my weaknesses. It's like, okay, so then stop calling Ariana out for being dirty because you are too. You're both nasty. It is what it is. I just, I'm interested to see where the rest of the finale goes. I'm also interested to see finale. What am I saying? The reunion. I'm also really interested to see everybody's reaction when Ariana finally sees what a bunch of backstabbing losers they all are because she didn't watch the season. So she doesn't know all the backstabbery crazy things that Lala said about her and Sheena and so on and so forth. And so I'm interested for them to see the ending of the finale together and see where they broke the fourth wall. Like, Oh, God, we broke the fourth wall. Oh my God, it's crazy. I'm going to break the fourth wall. Here I go. It's like, okay, just do it. Like, who cares? 
And, you know, Jeremiah, I guess Jeremiah, their producer, was like, yeah, go ahead and say what you got to say. Do what you got to do. And it just makes me feel like, okay, I think the producers weren't on Ariana's side either. I really do think that the producers should have come together and been like, how do we have, like, a women are the most amazing season? Instead of having a, like, let's tag team on which one of us is going to bring Ariana down this week. I don't get, I just don't understand it. Again, I, I would love to see it a place where um, Ariana was full of herself, made everything she was doing her personality. People don't understand what boundaries are and how to set them appropriately. And when someone does that, people have a hard time with that. People have a hard time with boundaries because they don't like that it's stopping you from wanting to do what you want to do. And so I just, I don't know. They're very... It's very much like, oh, Ariana basically like, like, I think Sheena talked about it in her podcast. I saw like some clips of it where she was like, oh, you know, from a coworker point of view, I was really mad. But like from a, like a best friend point of view, which I'm like, girl, you're not her best friend anymore. From a best friend point of view, I can, like, I understand why she walked away and blah, 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 blah. It's like, you guys understand that by her walking away, that made for great TV. Like her not being there. And her basically just being like, that made for really good TV. I don't know why they're acting like it didn't. It did. It made for great TV. I enjoyed it. I was like, girl, walk away. Do it up. Say bye-bye, bitch. Like, I was living for that. I love that she walked away. And she didn't want to put up with this crap anymore. I think that was great. I don't know. You guys tell me what you thought of the first reunion episode. I know I left a bunch of things out. Like, you know, Brock and his kids and... Just a bunch of like, just like little ditty things. The biggest thing, obviously, in this, in that episode was Katie and Lala and Ariana and all that stuff. And yeah, I think that there's a lot of hypocrisy happening. I think that Lala is the biggest hypocrite out of all of them right now. I think that it should have been a season, which I've said many times on here, that it should have been a season where they could have come together and really been a girl like a girl group like ariana said like she thought they were the spice girls and i'm like yeah i really thought that they were going to do that as well but they didn't they wanted to for whatever reason be on the hateful side i don't necessarily think like people are like oh my god like all of a sudden lala like loves thomas defending tom no she's not she's not she doesn't give t sorry she really doesn't i truly believe this i i think that she just used tom this season to move her storyline more, which I've said like a million times that Lala's really good at that. I think that she doesn't give two rack buttholes about Tom Sandoval. And I think she just wanted to find a way to irritate Ariana. There's just a lot, of, it's a lot of, I don't know why there's jealousy when Ariana literally had these girls in videos, was totally fine with letting them like make their money off of the situation, off of her sadness. Like, you're sitting there making money off of your Leave It to Daryl merch, which is off of the sadness of your friend. And you were fine doing, you were fine doing that. And your friend let you do that. Was like, no, didn't say one thing, didn't say, please don't do this. Please don't profit off of my misery. No, she was like, go ahead, do what you got to do. Like, screw this guy. Who gives a shit? I don't know what more these, I don't know what more they want from Ariana. They're like sucking her dry and it makes no sense sense none of it makes any sense them being like i'm not jealous i'm not jealous like you're on a reality tv show you should be showing you know your reality and i'm like yeah but what you don't understand and i've said this a million times is that there is a difference between ariana and the rest of them and that sometimes i think includes katie too is that she is a real person on reality tv not a reality tv person living in reality you know lala and sheena they are reality tv stars producers every single day of their lives like there is nothing that they they just are they want everybody to show everything at all times and they don't understand why someone would want to do that well you're on reality tv don't you want to show everything it's like no some there's some things i don't want to show on television there's some things that i don't want to talk about there's some things that i find to be highly inappropriate about my life that I do not wish to have conversations about. But Lala's not like that. Lala's like, no, 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 everything's going to be on TV. I want Lala to have her own show. And I want her to show us everything. I, I don't think Lala could have a TV show about her family and about her. Because she 
would have to rely on herself instead of everybody else's BS and drama around her. And I don't know if she could handle that. I don't know if she would like that she can't produce the other people around her. I mean, she's like, she says every season, like, oh, I didn't really get to talk about my life and about my situation. And I really wanted to talk about it. And it just kind of is what it is and blah, blah, blah. I think that she was very upset and very jealous because last season she really wanted to talk about what happened with her and Randall. And she really wanted to bring that conversation up a lot more. And basically that got sideswiped by what Tom did. And it's like, okay, but why are you upset with Ariana? It wasn't Ariana that did that. Are, you think Ariana wants to be on camera talking to her ex about how he cheated on her? No. So why are we mad at her for the whole season getting derailed when what we should have been mad at is Tom Sandoval. He's the one that derailed the season. He's the one that effed everything up. Raquel, they're the ones that screwed everything up for this season that took away the opportunity for you to have a storyline. Not Ariana. Ariana didn't do that. My hair looks crazy right now, but that's okay. I don't really care. Here we are. How do I look? How do I look? Do I look gorgeous? Mm, just for you guys. That's how I feel about this first episode. Comment down below how you feel about the episode. I'm trying to find my lipstick here. Comment how you feel about the episode, what you think they should have shown more of, what you think they could talk about more of, who you feel like is a hypocrite and full of crap, you know, the usuals of those. Uh, also comment on what you think the rest of the season is going to, what the rest of the reunions are going to look like, what you think they're going to talk about. Because Lala really is like hell bent on being like, oh, you guys are going to see, wait till you guys see. You guys are going to see when the reunion happens and you're going to have a different look on everybody, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Still waiting. Still still waiting. When am I supposed to change my mind again? Because I'm not. Because so far, everything I've seen points to you're all a bunch of a-holes and these two are getting dug into the ground for God only knows what. Still don't know what we're doing. Still don't know what we're talking about. Still don't know when I'm supposed to not be on Ariana and uh, Katie's side. You just let me know. Like, give me a phone call. So you guys let me know how you thought about everything as per usual like subscribe comment share push the algorithm baby push it forward give me all the wonderfulness so we can have more people join the gang here check out my podcast the big sisters podcast where i give advice about whatever you want if you want some advice you can always comment below and i can give you advice on the next episode of my podcast um it's been on hiatus for two weeks because i have been very very busy and my children have been sick and so on and so forth but there are episodes up right now, so you can go check that out. They're not sick. Oh, they're not sick anymore, though. That's what he says. Follow me on all my social medias, which I'll put down below. I will also put links to ways that you can help uh, the people of Palestine, how you can help the students that are protesting. And as always, please go and support your local LGBTQIA businesses. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.